This witness is probably one of my, if not my all-time favorite witnesses of this trial. And probably most of you have seen him already. Bryce Skolton, police officer. Um, he's just, he uses Darrell's name multiple times and it doesn't flinch. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't get flustered by his, you know, Darrell's multiple questions. It's just an awesome sight to behold. I actually call him um, Officer Redbeard. He's just, um, he's very cool. So here we are. And if you watch the other videos, all of these were the same day. The, the two police officers prior, um, before the trial got started, when um, Darrell and Judge Darrow got into it. She was shutting him down. And now we're waiting for them to call, for the prosecution to call um, Officer Skolton to the witness stand. But you can see he's waiting. He has to say something to the judge. So let's see if he's all prepared. Mask, yes. Check. Ridiculously oversized suit, yes. Water that I never see him drink, yes. One of his stupid boxes, yes. And his paperback Bible prop, check. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, and before we begin, I'm not a licensed psychiatrist, psychologist, attorney. Um, I am just a commenter and an observer and like to bring humor into the darkness. And this is dark, so let's laugh, folks. Here we go. Yeah, okay. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we'll have the jury brought out, and uh, the state may call its next witness when the jury is out here. Go ahead. Please. Your objection is noted for the record. I, I don't believe the audio is on. Your objection is noted for the record. I addressed that yesterday. I will not be addressing it again. Was I at least heard for the record? Because you just stated that the audio wasn't on. Oh, God. I heard it. Did the record hear it? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, the record heard, and I think the Pope even heard it too. Subject matter jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction. Yep. All right. Yep. Even the Pope knows about it. So stand up and shut up. ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Uh, Bryce Skolton, spelled B-R-Y-C-E. Skolton is S-C-H-O-L-T-E-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. What line of work are you in? I'm a police officer for the city of Waukesha. How long have you been a Waukesha police officer? Uh, seven and a half years. What's your current assignment? Currently, I'm a specialist assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division. What about back in November of 2021? What was your assignment back then? I was a police officer. <laughs> Were you working as a police officer on November 21st of 2021? Yes, I was. Were you assigned to work at the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, I was. Do you recall where you were posted during the parade? My assignment was traffic control at the intersection of Northwest Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue. Will you please put up for the jury exhibit number one, which has previously been published? Go okay. ahead. Could you circle for us the intersection where you were posted uh, yes. on this map? Actually, it's a touch. Use your finger. Just use your finger. 
I may want to take that point. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you've circled the intersection of West Main Street and Wisconsin <laughs> Avenue, correct? Correct. What does the purple line on that map depict? The purple line is the uh, parade route for the Christmas parade. But then, uh, what happens to the purple line at Maine and Wisconsin? Uh, that is where the line stops. That is, I believe, where the vehicle left the parade route. The vehicles and the groups and the participants of the parade who were marching on the parade route, where did they go once they got to the intersection of Maine and Wisconsin? They continued down the parade route, which was eastbound on Wisconsin Avenue. And then after reaching uh, Maple Avenue, then they were to go southbound. And the library is near that intersection, is that right? Correct. Traffic coming westbound, excuse me, eastbound on Wisconsin Avenue from the west. Were they able to get through the intersection where you were posted? No. I had traffic blocked off uh, where I circled there. You can barely see anymore. But uh, the red line, that is how I had barricades across that intersection. So all eastbound traffic on Wisconsin was forced to go southbound on Northwest Avenue. Okay, what about traffic approaching from the south on, um, what is that, West Avenue? Yes, yeah, so northbound traffic on Northwest Avenue could only go westbound on Wisconsin Avenue. Do you recall what you were wearing that day? <clears throat> yes, I was wearing my uh, standard police uniform with external carrier and a police jacket. And on my outermost um, layer was a like neon uh, traffic vest. We can take this exhibit down. <coughs> what was that number again? One. Thank you. That's my thought. Were you uh, the only police officer stationed at that intersection? Yes, I was. Do you know approximately how far away the next closest officer would have been? I believe the next closest officer was approximately two blocks away. Did you have a police radio with you while you were standing in the intersection? Yes, I did. At some point, did you hear something on the radio that concerned you? Yes. Describe that for us. I heard, so the parade was on channel three, so that's what I was assigned to. Um, these radios also have the ability to scan other channels, so I was scanning channel one, which is what the road squads uh, were working on. At that time, I heard a call for service on channel one for uh, the road squads to be dispatched to, and it was some sort of domestic disturbance or fight in Frame Park, which was east of my location. Um, I heard squads responding to that um, from the south portion of the city and Northwest Avenue or West Avenue is one of the main thoroughfares um, in our city to get from the southern portion to the northern portion or at least to the downtown area. And I could hear squads coming from that area so I blocked traffic to allow the squads to get through. And then uh, I just continued on with my parade duties. What happened next? Uh, after that, approximately a minute or so later, uh, I believe I started hearing uh, radio traffic on both Channel 3 and Channel 1. Um, I believe either a reserve officer or a community service officer on Channel 3 requested an ambulance somewhere on the eastern portion of the parade route. Um, I remember it was sort of towards the beginning of the parade. Uh, they were asking for an ambulance because someone had been hit. Then what happened? Uh, I believed that it was something stemming from the domestic or the fight because during that fight someone had fled on scene and someone had been flagged down who had reported this incident. So I believed that the hit was something to do with the physical altercation that had happened. Um, moments later, this was, all, this was all sort of spun out of control very quickly. Um, radio traffic became more and more difficult as Channel 1 and Channel 3. So as officers on the road and officers and community service officers and reserve officers uh, were working the parade, everyone was starting to get on the radio and more and more people started calling for ambulances. As, and then I could tell as people were calling for them, it was becoming, it was moving westbound on the parade route. What did you do as a result of hearing that information on the radio? 
Um, it was tough to piece all together. I didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, I knew something was happening, but I didn't know exactly what. Uh, I have a collar mic, so my microphone was approximately right about here on my chest. I don't have an earpiece. That's just what I use. Um, so between list, trying to listen to the radio microphone and the parade, it was sort of hard to piece together. Um, but after a few minutes, I realized something was happening, and I began walking away from my post and I walked past my barricade sort of into the parade route and as I did that I was looking um, more to like northeast uh, I couldn't see that much of the parade because where West Main Street ends right there it's got a hard turn to go southbound to Wisconsin so I could only see approximately I don't even know maybe a hundred yards or less uh, of the parade route and at that point, that is when I started hearing more screams. And this time, it wasn't just screams on my radio. It was screams, like, in my vicinity that I could hear. And at that moment, I saw a red blur come past the Wisconsin house westbound and uh, make a very hard braking maneuver to navigate the left-hand turn on West Main Street Let to go there. And let's put southbound. Exhibit one. Sorry, let's put exhibit one back up. After putting Exhibit 1 back up, I just want to make a record of the hand gesture he made previously when testifying about, uh, I believe it was his radio microphone, he used his right hand, I would say about heart height, to indicate his, I believe he called it a lapel mic or uh, something to do with his radio and where he would hear from. Go ahead. I don't think he said lapel. I think he was. Just, I think he referred to the microphone just being here and not using the earpiece. That's just. Um, your objection is no. That the state can see clarification, but the fact um, I did my best to describe uh, the action of the officer on the stand. Go ahead. Thank you. Can we actually uh, zoom in on the bottom left corner of this map? You mentioned the Wisconsin House. Can you describe for us where that is? The Wisconsin House is actually this building right here that is tan. It's the farthest uh, building right before, uh, I guess, on the left portion. You just put a little dot there. That should be the Wisconsin House. Okay, so the right is the Main Street curves to the left there? Correct. It is the, I believe it's the last building sort of on West Main Street right before the left turn. So if you were standing in the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine, the Wisconsin house is the building that would obstruct your view further east up Main Street? Correct. Um, there's a parking lot to the left as you look at the screen um, and the vehicle's parked there so I can't even see pretty much anything in front of uh, the Wisconsin House on Main Street from my location. We can take that back down, please. What happened as the red blur rounded the corner? I realized um, what was happening at that point. Uh, I recognized it was a red SUV and there was extreme uh, vehicle damage to it on the front. Uh, the hood was smashed up towards the windshield, uh, the front portion of the front bumpers, the fenders, everything was, um, it was extreme vehicle damage. Like vehicle damage that you'd see at a traffic crash between two vehicles. Um, at that point, between all the screaming I heard, everyone calling for ambulances and help, and then realizing people hit, I knew it was now people hit by a vehicle, and I knew that those initial requests were so far eastbound on the parade, and now I'm at towards the end of the parade, or at least the end of the portion of Main Street. I knew that this vehicle had likely, and based on the speed of the vehicle, that the vehicle had ran through the entire parade route and likely severely injured people or killed people. And at that point, I thought it was a terror attack at the parade. What happened as the SUV continued southbound? Uh, as the vehicle navigated its turn to go southbound, it accelerated towards me, and as that happened, he uh, ran over the barricades and left, ultimately left the parade route and continued southbound on Northwest Avenue. West Avenue is how many blocks from Maple Avenue? <clears throat> One block. Relevancy. 
Maple. And uh, to what direction is west from Maple? West Avenue is wow. one block to the west from Maple. <laughs> I'd like to show for the witness only, please, exhibit number 57. Can we clear the annotations? You see a video on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. We're going to play a few moments uh, without any audio just to see if you <coughs> recognize this video, okay? Okay. We've played seven seconds for you. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. What does it show? This is the vehicle that was driven by Daryl Brooks on, uh, mm -hmm. during the Christmas parade that go. drove past me and I shot at. Objection. Um, Here we go. I don't consent to the uh, cause that I happened, nor do I identify. I'm here in third party. So Your objective is for. noted. It's overruled. The witness has previously identified you. Uh, go ahead. Stated for the record. Let me ask you a last question. Does this video accurately depict the scene as you saw it that day? Yes, it does. Move exhibit 57 into evidence and request permission to publish. Exhibit 57 is received by the court and permission to publish is granted. This is a 19 second video. I'll wait for the bailiff to signal that the jury has it. Before we hit play, I'd like you, if you can, to point out the Wisconsin House for us. The Wisconsin House is this brown brick building here on the right that has the Golden Moments gentleman beer sign right here. Thank you. We can clear that. And we'll watch uh, the entirety of this clip with volume, please, at regular speed. <laughs> Shots did you hear in that video? Three. Is that consistent with your memory of the event? Yes, it is. Can we pull that back up uh, at about the 10 second mark, please? Do you see yourself at the 10 second mark? Yes, I do. Can you circle yourself for us? You're the only person at this 10 second mark wearing a yellow. Best. Correct. Okay, we can clear that, please. Can we slow this down with no audio? Slow it down to about 50%, please. And play from there. seconds. Does that portion of the video accurately, accurately reflect uh, what you did that day? That is correct. Okay. I'd like to show for the witness only, please, exhibit number 170. Go ahead. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What does it show? This shows the vehicle damage that I observed when I first saw the vehicle as it was coming towards me. This is the vehicle that was, again, driven the Christmas parade by <coughs> Daryl Brooks. Objection, I don't consent to being called that again for the record. He does it. Red <coughs> Mr. Party. Officer Redbeard doesn't care. He's going to keep calling it to you, and nobody's going to say anything to him about it. The for objection, the it's on the record. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video we just watched, Exhibit 57? It does appear so. And again, this is then an accurate depiction of how the vehicle looked that day? That is correct. I move exhibit 170 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Well, let me see. Overruled. Exhibit 170 is received permission 
uh, to publish is granted. I would remind the jury once again that um, comments made by parties and lawyers um, are not evidence. And Darrell Brooks. And should thus not be considered as such. Now I'd like to show for the witness only exhibit number 169, please. Go ahead. That still blows my mind every time I see it. That hit people. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What is it? This is that same vehicle. Uh, it appears to be just moments after that first picture we just were shown. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video in Exhibit 57? Yes, it does. Is this an accurate depiction of how the vehicle and the driver looked to you that day? Yes. Move Exhibit 169 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 169 is received Shut permission to publish as granted. Objection. Noted. Overruled. Incredible. Now I'd like to show for the witness only, please. Hold on. Was that in the jury box? Okay, it was there. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that earlier. All right, so next exhibit you may show to the witness. Exhibit 58, please. We're going to play a few seconds of this, give you a chance to see if you recognize it, okay? Okay. played seven seconds. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. What does it show? It shows uh, pretty much what the last video showed, just from a different uh, point of view from that same intersection. Is this an accurate video depicting <laughs> the events as you saw them on November 21st? Yes, it does. I'll move Exhibit 58 into evidence and ask to publish with the caveat about the Comments on the right side of the screen, please. Objection. Exhibit 58 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The jury will disregard the comments that are on the right side of the exhibit. Those are not to be considered as evidence. This is a 15-second clip. We'll play it once at regular speed with audio, please. How can you look at that? That is sick, sickening. We see the barricades at the end of that clip, is that right? That is correct. And uh, do you recall what those are made out of? Wow, I believe they're made out of fiberglass or plastic. And what we saw in that video, again, that's inaccurate. <clears throat> Does that match up with how you recall the incident? That is correct. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, sit right. back, folks. Any questions for this witness, sir? I do. Oh, uh, He's going to be Mr. Hotshot Lawyer. You stated uh, initially that you had heard uh, some radio calls about a, a possible uh, altercation at Frame Park. That is correct. Uh, do you recall? the initial report of that was? My recollection of that was that there was a call for service is either a domestic or some sort of physical altercation along the riverfront in Frame Park and that uh, there was a male with a uh, armed with a knife and that he was fleeing from the area. So it was reported it was a possible knife involved and there was a male running from the scene? That is correct. And were you ever given any uh, further information about the male with the knife that was running from the scene? No. Any information that the male with a knife running from the scene 
was in a vehicle at any time? No. Do you know if any investigation was done uh, looking into that supposed fight at the park? Yes. And what did you learn? I did not learn anything of it. I just know that squads were responding there to investigate it. I was not updated on their findings or what they had investigated. I just know that they were dispatched there for that investigation. Do you recall if there was ever a knife recovered or a, a suspect recovered in that supposed incident? Do you mean like how much later do I know? Like what I know at, now? At any time, at any time. Mm -hmm. Do you know if, if there was a, a suspect? Spit it out, Darrell. I guess I would say apprehended or anything that was found with a knife, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, I do not know if the suspect from that incident, which was you, uh, was located <laughs> with a knife. You, what do you mean? You, Daryl Brooks. Yes. I know you were the suspect in that incident, sweet, and I know sweet. you were so um, sweet. taken into custody approximately 30 to 40 minutes later. I do not know if you were armed when you were taken into custody. I'll let the record uh, reflect that. I do not identify by that name, nor do and I know nobody you gives a shit by that name. I'm here in third party. The record's noted, although the jury will disregard the comments, they are not evidence in this case. That's right. Next question, please. At the time, you said, did you respond to that incident at the park? No. So how can you know who was involved with it if you didn't respond? You yourself? asked him, idiot. Because you stated at any time this investigation took a long time to complete. And from this investigation, we determined that you were the suspect in that investigation. You determined because that? I did not, no. Okay. So basically, you're just going off what you were told because you just stated that you didn't make any determination nor did you investigate it. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. But you asked him, Darrell. Don't ask if you don't want to hear the answer. You also gave, uh, and when you were asked the question of um, were there any other officers along the route, or I don't know if that was referring to side exits or anything of that nature, but I recall you stating that you, you gave an estimate, stating that you, you weren't sure where other officers were stationed, but you gave an approximate ex estimate. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. <laughs> and would that have been officers stationed at different cross streets? That is correct. Do you know if those cross streets were barricaded? I know that there were barricades across numerous intersections for the parade route. That's how we uh, shut down traffic in the downtown area for parades. So pretty much every side street is barricaded? I can't give you specifics on what uh, streets were barricaded, but yes, the vast majority of streets are barricaded to stop traffic for the parade route. Can you pull up Exhibit 1 and publish? The statement, please do that. Thank you. see the the red lines on this map that we're looking at yes and what do those red lines constitute barricades so would it be fair to say that there's a red line at every cross street that we can see on this map that would be you mean start, along the parade route start, or the along, the, along the parade route starting at east Main Street, there's a 
a red mark. Oh, I didn't mean to put that uh, arrow. Can we clear that? I was trying to put like a little dot. <coughs> Starting there, there's a red line there. There's two at Buckley. Hold on, just so the record is clear, he put a mark at the near the intersection of East Main and White Rock Avenue. So from that location to where? There's two at Buckley. Well, hold on, you're testifying now. You gotta ask a question. So yeah. you gotta disregard that. Are there statement. are there two at Buckley? Yeah. Yes. Is there one at Martin Street? Yes. Is there one at is is there two at Barstow Street? Yes. One at Gaspar. Yes. One at North Grand and one at West Broadway. There's two at West Broadway. Well, this this one is on the closer to where it says North Grand, and one is on the other side of the star right there. This is what I'm referring to. Okay. Yes, there are two right there. Please clear that map question. So there, there's two there. There's two at Clinton Street. Can you see those two? Yes. There's one at Maple Avenue. Can you see that one? Yes. And there's one at right here at West Avenue. Can you see that? Correct. Yes. So it would be fair to say that there's pretty much barriers at every single street from White Rock in East Main to West Main in West Northwest Avenue? Yes. Do you know if there were officers stationed at those barricades? Yes, this map shows, it appears, uh, where everyone was uh, for their assignments that day. So would it be fair to say if someone wanted to exit the parade route, they would essentially be blocked in by the officers and barricades? No. There are barricades at these streets we can see. Would that be fair to say? No. <laughs> so it's not fair to say that there's barricades nope. at these streets? <clears throat> it's fair to say that there's barricades at the streets. So. Essentially, if someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go right through the barricades? Based on the previous videos that we just were shown. <laughs> Not based on the previous video. uh -huh. yeah. If someone was leaving the parade on, route, dude. can they just Please. go down these streets that are barricaded? Can they just drive right out of there? Yes, the video show that. How do when it's barricaded? Oh, Darrell, you're, you're way... As the video we sh were shown earlier, the vehicle went right through the barricade. Well, you ask the question, That's you have right. to let him answer that he's giving you right. a reason. You ask him how. He's explaining it. There's plenty of ways to get off the parade route. You, you can stop um, after being given lawful orders by officers, yes. and they could have directed you off the parade route in a safe manner. You could have stopped the vehicle at any point. Or you could have driven through plastic barricades like you did at Northwest Avenue, where I was located. And so yes, you, you can drive through the plastic who? barricades. Do you, you refer to as who? Daryl Brooks, you, the person that's talking. Do you? And how did you come to the conclusion of that name as you stated that you couldn't see past this building here, which you just, which you, <clears throat> Say is the Wisconsin House. Would that be fair to say? Well, that's a compound question, so I you need to rephrase yeah, that. Yeah, really sir. is. Even I need mean, clear, clear this right there. Please, is that a please? Clear. Can you clear this? Uh, See, this is a thing. She's really, you know, I think that Officer Redbeard has given her power and strength because he's so rude. Because I think it's generally either the state or the clerk of the court. The clerk of court who is you know taking this stuff off and so she's sitting there going please please he'll just go remove that or do this or do that she keeps saying is that a please is that a please he is oh my god I need chocolate guys I need chocolate but I don't really have to talk much on this one because officer Redbeard really so 
so outstanding. Circle and arrow right here, that's... Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yep, see? You Thank you, Madam Clerk. From where you were positioned at, so you couldn't see around that despicable. building. Did you, did you say that? Yes, I did. So it would be fair to say you also couldn't see what was happening along the parade route mm. on Main Street. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So it would be also fair to say that everything that you knew up until that point came over the radio and you didn't have first-hand knowledge. That is correct. You also stated that after a few minutes of hearing these, I guess, radio reports, you said after a few minutes, mm -hmm. you noticed something was going on. Do you recall from the reports how long this vehicle traveled along the parade route? An estimate, a estimate of the time that it traveled down the parade route? I do not know how long uh, the vehicle was on the parade route for. If I had to estimate, I would estimate approximately one to two and a half minutes. Two minutes, maybe. Would you... Would you say it's fair to say that that's relatively a short amount of time? I would agree with that. So what do you mean by after a few minutes you noticed something was going on? <coughs> because after a few minutes what I meant by that was the initial call for service at the boat launch um, or for that domestic fight in Frame Park. From that time frame, from when squads were responding to there to the time that um, I had shots fired, that is what I mean by a few minutes. So you have to take into account the, the time for squads responding to that call. I, I don't know uh, police protocol, so just ask me. Yeah, you act like you do. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. I'm, I'm getting to it. No, mm -hmm. right, but... Yeah. Comments. He's making comments. He's testifying. I have to advise the jury to disregard the comment because it's not testimony. You see, Officer Redbeard is getting derail flustered. And you stated that. Well, let's let's go to. Uh, How happy they are! They're like, yes, we can sit back and enjoy. Go ahead. You don't. Need, do you need that? We're gonna turn it off. Officer, yeah, you can you can take that down. Sorry about that. Please and thank you. Uh, mm. Keep reaching, keep reaching. I believe it's Exhibit 57. Pull up Exhibit 57. Please. Gosh. Simple manners that you're taught as a child. <laughs> Can we bring it to about... 16 or 17 seconds. say that those are barricades that are laying in the street there? I have no clue as to why he is still talking about the damn barricades. I mean, everyone, everyone already knows he drove through them. Whether they're laying down, sitting up, whatever. But let's see if he gets anywhere with this. Highly unlikely. Correct. Any idea why they were not standing up? Yes, I do. What would be the reason? It was very windy that day, so when they were standing up uh, how they normally are, they kept on blowing across the street. 
So we tilted them on their sides so they wouldn't get blown across the road and they would still stay up there and block traffic. They would be able to block traffic by laying down? Not yes, you. they serve the same purpose. But they would be able to block traffic by laying down. I guess I don't understand what your question yeah, really. is here. Would, would it be much more easier to see them if they were facing upright than laying down? Uh, is I say think the height them? difference between them laying Please. down and uh, being upright is probably quite minuscule because as you see, the legs that are now up in the air are approximately the same height as what the bar would be if they were standing the... This Stand picture is kind of blurry, so it's hard are. to see, but I and take his word for it. that conclusion, conclusion how? Based on my training experience, after deploying barricades on numerous events and working several parades in my work history. So you would estimate that a barricade facing upright and a barricade laying down would be the same height? Yes, Approximately. Idiot. For the love, keep. Can you bring it back to 10, 10 seconds? Mm, mm, mm. From what we're looking at right now, it's a little hard to see. You can see the vehicle, you can see where you identified you would you were, but it's a little bit hard to see everything. Would that be fair to say? Because of the the person with the black coat and the gray hoodie and Nike black pants is directly in the middle of the screen? That's fair to say. It's a little hard to see from this. Where it is paused now, yes. Yes, where, that's what I meant, where, where it's paused now. Yes. Um, it looks like you're this would be you right here. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. It looks like you're firing your weapon right there. Would that be fair to say? I do not know if I have uh, pulled the trigger yet or not. I don't believe I have. I you were ready, ready to fire at that point. That's correct. Did you recall what you were aiming for? Yes, I do. Oh, come on. Do you stay for the record and for the jury? You, Daryl Brooks. <laughs> Again, you make reference to the you. And the name. How did you come to that? Being Seeing as how. Seeing as how. You just testified to that. You couldn't see anything before uh, what you called. The West Constant House of Deputy Fair to say on Officer Redbeard. Testify to that? That's correct. And you also stated that you learned additional information later on. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So how could you determine at this time right now where we're looking at that you knew the suspect's name and the driver? Because you keep referring to you and then you saying the name. How did you mark, how did you have that information at this point that that's paused right here that we're looking at? I didn't say at that time I knew your name. You referred to the name. Did you not? That's correct. So how were you able to obtain the information about the name? I did not know your name at the time I shot at you. Who's the you you were referring to? Daryl Brooks. Again, you say a name, but you <laughs> haven't answered how you came to that information. Were you told this? Yes. By whom? I do not know who told me. Ultimately, I just know that throughout the course of the investigation, you, your name, you were arrested within 30 or 40 minutes, and you were identified as Daryl Brooks, who was the suspect in this incident. So you either had to hear that name from either a report that you heard or someone told you. Darrell, How did you I'm come lying. to the conclusion of the name? 
I'm assuming someone at the police department told me your name. And you don't recall who that was? No. Even though you can cite the name so clearly and identify it and keep stressing it and stressing it, <laughs> you don't recall how you might have It's talking too much. Nobody's even objecting. That's like correct. Red beard handling. And he's not sweating. So is it fair to say that you're just using the name based off what you're told and not what you were aware of? Now he's focusing on his name. That's awesome. What are you asking me? <laughs> is it fair to say that you're identifying this name based off of what you told and not what you knew? I'm saying the name based on the fact that you are now... You were arrested for this incident. You were identified during this incident. And because of that investigation, that is how we know your name. Would it be fair to say, and obviously you said you've been uh, in law enforcement for seven and a half years, correct? Correct. I'm sure you've done a lot of investigations in that seven and a half years. Is that fair to say? Correct. So you do understand that during an, a police investigation, any suspect is innocent until proven guilty. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. He never said he was guilty. So with that knowledge, why are you so eminent about the name of the suspect that you just testified to not being aware of at the time? That you testified to in that fact make being told? That a lick of sense. Sorry, I'm confused by your question. You say that. <laughs> yeah, no I shit. I think it was clear, but I'll say it again. Yeah, please. Thank you. Well, I'll say it this way. You testified to not being aware of the suspect's name at the time. Correct. You also, you also testified to being told of the name, correct? Correct. I don't. I don't know how I came about your name. I would assume it was through the investigation at the police department. And were you, in fact, part of that investigation? No, I was not. So, it would be fair to say that by you using a name, you would not be sure. How can you be sure? I'll object. Uh, Ground argument. <laughs> it's been asked. I love it. It's been answered. It's argumentative. The objection is sustained. Please ask your next question. Oh. I'm, this might be better than chocolate, guys. When asked about uh, what you were aiming at when you fired, you didn't give a definitive answer. You were aiming for the driver? He said you. I felt like I gave a pretty definitive yeah, answer. My you. answer was you. You were aiming for the driver. Yes. God. It's pretty definitive. I identified the person so I was shooting what, at. What part of the driver's body could you see when the vehicle passed you? When the vehicle was approaching me, I could see the silhouette of his uh, face and upper portion of his body. Can you describe what you mean by silhouette? Oh dear, Darrell doesn't know what the a silhouette is. portion of a person's body, I would say, from maybe chest, shoulders, and head and face. You say a silhouette, though. What, what is a silhouette? Oh, God. The was... outer portions of what would be like your shoulder down, your arms to your chest, the silhouette. Don't you imagine Officer Redbeard is going, I can't believe I'm sitting here. And this fool has gone on and on about his name. And now I'm having to explain to him what the hell a silhouette is. Uh, that would be the outer portion of it. That would be the upper half, not the silhouette. <laughs> what do you mean by silhouette? Object. Oh. The objection is sustained. Look at these guys. <laughs> Mr. Brooks is not asking a question. It was argumentative. Um, the jury what, can certainly what it decide mean? what that means. But what he's it, answered the question. Would it be fair to say that that would be equivalent to a profile? Oh, God. No. What do you mean by a profile? 
a profile would be sort of <laughs> Guys, like a, I'm sorry, my laugh is probably so annoying. Like a side angle view. Would it be fair to say that a silhouette would be more of an outline is he still that would on be the kind of similar to silhouette. a profile? I don't know exactly what you're asking here, but I can tell you when the vehicle was driving towards me, I could see your face. And then as the vehicle drove to my right, yes, then I saw the side of your face. And so then, yes, as a vehicle passes you, you see different portions of the driver, I guess you could say. And so you aim towards what you can see? Correct. <laughs> so that would be the upper part, as you say, the, you said the show you made a I think it was your left hand pointed to your right shoulder. Uh, shoulder. Stop. The rail. Silhouette, as you say. That is what I could see when you were driving at me. You asked me what I could see of you, and that is what I could see of you in the vehicle when and you were I, approaching me. The question now, though, is is that what you aim for? Estimation. Acknowledging that those were kill shots. If you connect it with any of those shots, is it possible the driver could have been killed? Yes. And would it be fair to say that that's deadly force? Yes. <coughs> Do you think it would have been possible to aim at the tire of the vehicle? No. Why not? With, with the with shooting the tire of the vehicle not stop the vehicle? No, it would not have. <clears throat> so a blown tire would, to your estimation, a blown tire would not stop a vehicle from moving? No, it will not. So it would just, it would just keep on, it won't even slow down? That is correct. I'm trained to stop the threat. You were the threat. The vehicle was not. Th the vehicle was the weapon in which you used. So that is why I shot at you. There's the you again. Pretty clear. Mm. Um, it's killing him. It's eating him inside. Could you have? Well, you, you testify that you're trying to stop the threat. And so, would it be fair to say that that training? constitutes shooting kill shots. Well, we are trained uh, in deadly force, and when we are presented with a deadly force incident, yes, we have to sometimes make that difficult decision and use deadly force. Have you ever used deadly force before that incident? Objection. <laughs> Sustained. Well, pause for a moment. You know, Darrell is just going to be that wooker, wooker, pff, woodpecker in the petrified forest. He's going to keep asking question after question after question. But he is not going to break Officer Redbeard. He can keep going, you know, have fun, Darrell. But I don't think you're going to break Officer Redbeard. Let's see. said you're trained to use deadly force so would it be fair to say that anytime you shoot your weapon it would be deadly force when it is directed at a person yes were you injured in any way during the incident <coughs> no I was not and at the time being where you were posi positioned at You've already testified that you could not see what was going on during the parade route from your position. So, why did you feel the need at the time, not knowing the full extent of what was happening, to use deadly force? Because as I previously stated, based on the fact that the radio traffic for people screaming for ambulances and as uh, different officers were getting on the radio and it was progressively moving further and further westbound towards me on the parade route. Um, that and then 
officers saying someone was hit, which I initially thought was a physical altercation, someone being hit, but it was a vehicle versus person hit. Um, based on that, the vehicle speed at which, yes, I could not see it uh, down Main Street. I only had a couple seconds at most until uh, the vehicle from where I saw it was to my location. So based on the amount of vehicle damage, I knew uh, the vehicle had been striking pedestrians in the roadway, and because of that, um, that's a deadly force incident. So that is why I deployed deadly force. So you said you knew, you knew what the vehicle had, and you knew. You, can, you said it multiple yeah, times. Right. You knew. He knew. Yes. How could you know if you could not see around the position that you were were positioned in? How do you know that? Because based on the speed of a vehicle on a closed roadway during a parade and no, and people running out of the way so they did not get run over right in front of me, between all of those things, I knew what had just happened and that is why I had to take action. And you knew based on the radio reports? I would say everything that I had just previously described, all of that encompassing, yes. That led up to my decision making and to yes, now I knew what had happened. I did not know previous to that what was going on. I did not know there was a vehicle on the roadway until I saw it. And it all made sense when I put everything together. When you saw it, by the time you saw it, as you said, it was a couple of seconds. So at that point, did you observe the vehicle strike anyone from the time that you saw it? No, I did not. I was focused on the vehicle, so I just remember that there were a ton of little kids and adults, uh, adults on the sidewalks. I knew there were a lot of children right in the roadway right there. And I remember seeing people like running, but I wasn't really paying attention to the people. I was just focused on the vehicle. Um, so it was really all I was focused on at that point. You weren't paying attention to any other people you. That was not my primary focus. You were his focus, dumbass. But you do recall that no one was struck from the time you it saw doesn't it. Doesn't matter. Yes, after looking back, after videos later on throughout the investigation. No, 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 no. From which you saw, from which you observed with your own eyes. No, I can't recall ever seeing someone hit right in front of me. No, I do not recall that. Does the exhibit videos that you saw here today means nothing? Does anyone describe those vi uh, videos that you saw today? We have plenty that shows it. No, that show not it. that I saw today. <clears throat> and you still made the decision to shoot to kill. He loves saying that That's shoot correct. to kill. Actually, correction: I I shot to stop the threat. If ultimately you would have been killed from that, that is a possible outcome. But you did testify that they were kill shots, did you not? Uh-huh. Sustained. It's also been asked and answered in multiple yes. ways. Do you recall what your shots hit? If anything? <clears throat> uh, yes. Later on, uh, throughout the investigation, when I got no, at the time. At the time. Oh, not, shot. Not later on. Drill. At the time where you fired the shots. Mr. Brooks, you asked a question. He was attempting to answer it. Thank you. you have to let. I was trying to give you clarification. Of what but, you, but you have to let him answer the question that you asked. And if you feel the need for follow up, then you can do that or ask a very specific question. But he's going to, he, I'm allowing him to answer. Um, he was interrupted. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I believe it was three days after the incident. That is when I gave my voluntary statement to Detective. Uh, Kirby and Detective Casey and upon completion of that statement I asked them if uh, they could share any information with me and during that conversation I was shown a picture of the vehicle and where my round struck the vehicle. You stated you asked them for any additional information that they could give you. So it would be fair to say at that time you, you still didn't have a lot of information. <coughs> would it be fair to say that? That is correct. I didn't know where my rounds had struck previous to that. Did you ask them in the in the statement that you just testified to saying 
you ask them if they can provide you with any more information. Did you at any time specifically ask about the shots that you fired when you requested if they could give you any more information? I do not remember the specifics of what questions I asked uh, in pertaining to what information they could share with me. I think it was sort of a generalization of what can you share with me at this point. So would it be fair to say at that point that there's a possibility that you did not know the name of the suspect, nor here we go back to the name. Did you can know if you had shot the suspect at that time? At that time, I knew I had not uh, shot the suspect because the night of the incident when he was taken into custody, um, it was relayed to me that uh, he was uninjured and he had not been struck by any of my rounds that were fired. You do recall just testifying to requesting more information from the detectives when you had the conversation with them. Is that correct? That is correct. And you said that you don't recall asking them about if your bullet struck someone. Is that correct? That is correct. So the day I met with Detective Kirby and Detective Casey, that was, I believe, two or three days after the incident, uh, Mr. Brooks was taken into custody the night of. So when I was still at the police department, I knew that he had not been struck. So I think we're dealing with the questions I asked of the detectives. That was not the same night of the incident. I'm sure you asked, uh, you, didn't, you didn't say it, but you said you don't recall the information that you requested. Would that be fair to say? No, I don't recall specifically what questions I asked that they, what, I don't know specifically what questions I asked of them a year ago. I just, I know it was a generalized, what information can you share with me at this point? Because I didn't know what was going on in the investigation or what leads they had or essentially what had happened after my involvement, I guess. So you didn't, it's, it would be fair to say there was a lot of information that you still was not sure about at that point. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So if there was information that you're acknowledging that you had no knowledge of, which would be essentially the reason why you would ask if they can volunteer more information to you, then how would there be, how would there be any way of knowing if you struck the suspect? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. It's a compound, confusing. Well, it sure is. That was a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I also think it mischaracterizes the testimony. Indeed. He's going to keep reaching, though. He's going to keep pecking that petrified forest. Come on, Darrell. What you got? You're waiting. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> what do you got? Officer Redbeard is ready for you. And you said you had, you made a statement during your testimony that you had learned that the suspect was not injured. Do you recall you learned that information from? I believe uh, when I was back at the police department after the incident, so after using deadly force, you're ultimately removed from the scene. Um, when I was at the police department I was with a support officer and another detective and at that point um, I was still answering questions for investigating officers for what I saw what I knew what I saw in the vehicle and I believe detective Stern um, was at our substation with uh, Daryl Brooks after taking him into custody and I was shown um, a photo at that point and um, I know I had asked if he sustained any injuries or if anyone else 
had sustained any injuries um, from my use of force. And at that point, I was not told that anyone had been struck by my gunfire. So you just said you asked if the suspect or if anyone else was struck by the gunfire. That's correct. So you weren't sure at that point? You weren't no, sure? I was, I was not certain at that point. It was... I can't describe it any more than it was just pure chaos. And at that point, I did not know if anyone else was injured for my rounds or um, up until I was confirmed that you were not injured. Um, at that point, no, I did not know if anyone was hurt until I was told that. So would it be fair to say that and as you just stated, you were unsure if the suspect or anyone else was injured, would it be fair to say that there was a possibility because you did not know for certain? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Such a stupid question. Grounds for the sustained item. Stupidity, that's the grounds. Asked an answer. Next question. God, I'm glad y'all are watching this again with me because Ugh, you can get mad with me. I'm gonna keep digging. And dig. After the vehicle passed you, did you observe it strike anyone? I think you already asked that not, too. I did not observe it strike anyone after it passed me. You already hit all the people. What you got now, Darrell? Come on, come on. Well, let's bring it on. Bring it on. Take through your fake papers. <clears throat> Do you recall who you... Well, I think you did. I, I think you said you um, gave your report to Officer Kirby. Is that, is that correct? Uh, Detective Kirby, yes. I'm sorry, Detective. Do you recall <laughs> telling Detective Kirby that you were unaware of the vehicle on the parade route and you were unaware of people being injured? Yes, I previously stated that. Mm-hmm. Come on, Darrell, what you got now? Come on. Were you able to make out a license plate when it, from the vehicle? License, license plates. Oops, sorry. Uh, I later learned uh, that I must have, um, but I do not recall that. So from which you recall at the time that the vehicle was passed you don't recall getting the license plate at this time i do not recall the license plate but after i shot at the vehicle i then responded up main street and started triaging victims and after doing that um, i met with officers and i because i couldn't get on the radio and uh, give out as much information as i wanted to so when I spoke with other officers, that's when I explained to them that I was the one that had shot. It was not a suspect shooting, it was me. And that uh, the vehicle in question was a Red Four Escape. And I believe I was talking to Detective Casey, uh, Specialist Moss, and I believe there might have been another officer there as well. And I must have provided a license plate to Detective Casey uh, during that debrief on scene. I did not know about that until about two days later when I gave my statement to Detective Kirby and Detective Casey, uh, because that is when I was informed by Detective Casey that I had actually provided him a correct license plate, but I don't remember that. Why you didn't mention the license place in your report? 
Because like I stated, I don't remember it. Yeah. Like he stated, he didn't remember it. Doing that. Dumb question again. So it would be fair to say if you don't remember it, then it's a possibility that you did get the license plate number. No, that's not correct. I would say that if Detective Casey is telling me that I told him on scene during a traumatic incident that I provided him the license plate of the vehicle, I'd have to believe that Detective Casey is correct. There's many things that I, you do not remember during a traumatic incident, and I believe that's because your brain prevents you from remembering everything. So you would describe it as a traumatic incident that you do recall using deadly force and recalling what you was aim aiming for, but not the license place or anything else like that. You know what? Can I just say how stupid that is, what he just said? So stupid. See, he doesn't understand what trauma looks like because clearly he wasn't traumatized running over those people. Um, when I think about this, because I've seen pictures and um, living in Florida, it's like a hurricane. And the, 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 the trail of destruction it leaves. You can look at pictures and be horrified, but nothing is as horrifying as seeing it in person, firsthand, like this officer did and many others and people and he just Brooks doesn't get it at all because he just you know ran over those people like <clears throat> excuse me they're nothing I, I you know sorry I'm pausing for a moment but those of you who watch me understand um, and as awful as it is to think about um, this is about the victims and the families, even though we're making fun of Darrell. Um, have y'all ever hit anything? Like I've, you know, accidentally hit something, an animal, like a possum or a cat or, and just that is horrifying. Can you even fathom doing what he did, running up over people, uh, children, people bouncing off of the hood of his car and him just continuing to run over them. That's what separates Darrell from the rest of us. He just, he is just, he has a, a hole, a dark hole, and no soul. He's empty inside. And he doesn't understand when people describe trauma, he doesn't, he doesn't get what it means because he didn't, he doesn't feel anything except when he gets a paper cut. It's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just remarkable. And I guess that's why we still, everybody is still doing videos on him and talking about him because it's just so, it's just difficult to understand how somebody can be so cold, stupid at the same time. Okay. That's correct. Would it be fair to say that because you describe it as a traumatic event, that there was a lot of things that you probably don't recall about the incident? Nah, don't try to do that. I would, uh, I would agree with that. I would think that there's a lot of things um, when I became, uh, when I started going up West Main Street and started seeing the absolute destruction. I, I know there's things that I did and saw that I don't really remember and I don't really want to remember. Well, what it else possibly be the suspect that you keep naming? Please. No. No, you're not going to forget him. You're a police, he's a police officer. How do you not get that? They're trained to remember those types of things. And how did you come to the knowledge of the make and model of the vehicle when on the exhibit that was shown, you only had an interaction with it for a few seconds. How were you able to make out the make and the model of the vehicle? Because that vehicle model has been out for quite some time, and I'm 
halfway decent with vehicles, and I readily recognize that it was a Ford Escape. So you've seen many Ford Escapes? Yes. Okay. Come on. Remember the other officer? I mean, not just the other officer, but I recall him asking several officers in being so, like, astounded that they were able to recognize cars by make and model and all that stuff. But come on, it's so plain, so obvious. They're freaking police officers. They're trained to know that. I don't know why he thinks that's another gotcha thing. It's just, just another Brooksism or Dorellism. He's not going to break Officer Redbeard, although he does try, but he will not succeed. You said uh, the model has been out for some time, so what do you mean by that? Do you mean it's, it's 2022 model? now, and that been out some time. was approximately a 2008-ish to maybe a 2011, 2010-ish, so yeah, they've been out for over a decade. And how did you come to that knowledge of the estimate of the years that the model could have been? Oh my God. That, would you agree that that's pretty difficult to know just off the bat? Nope. No. Would that be fair to say? No. So it would be pretty easy to tell the make and model in year of a vehicle just by looking at it. That is correct. So it would be fair to say if someone had a vehicle right here in front of you. Right there. You would be able to tell just yep. by looking at it for a couple of seconds the right make there. model and the year. Depending on what vehicle it is, yeah, quite likely. I'm decent with vehicles. <clears throat> what do you mean by decent? Oh, jeez. I can recognize many vehicles that are manufactured. Uh, part of being a police officer is dealing with vehicles. Um, we run a lot of vehicle registration plates. So when you match the registration to a vehicle on a response, you become very well accustomed to the many different vehicles that are manufactured. Did you at any time see the registration of the vehicle that passed you? Like I stated previous, hmm. I debriefed with Detective Casey during the incident, and he stated that I gave him a registration number, a registration plate for it. I do not recall giving him that uh, registration plate, but uh, Detective Casey informed me that I provided him a correct license plate for that vehicle. Would it be fair to say that a registration kit without... Would it be fair to say that that automatically links to the, mo the make and model in the year of the car? Would it be fair to say that? That if you rent or if we're judging by the license plates, if you were conducting a stop and to do that you will have to run the license plates, would it be fair to say that, that all that information would come up in your computer when you run the license plate? Would that be fair to say? You had a lot of questions. I was right just going to so, say. Okay, let me, let me back up then. So. I was going to say, what the hell did he just say? A bunch of rambling nonsense. That was a lot. Okay, God. He is just trying so hard to trip Officer Redbeard. He's just, you're drowning, Darrell. Just face it, you're drowning. You gotta be in a tiny bed and and somebody named Bubba or Tex or somebody is gonna wanna spoon you. Okay, just you know or smack you senseless, one or the other. If you were if you were conducting a traffic stop. Okay. Oh god. He's and exhausting. you pulled up the license plates of the vehicle that you were stopping. Okay. Would the information registered to that vehicle show in your computer? If the license plate is actually accurate and current to that actual vehicle, yes. Just so we're clear, the information would come up, though. That is correct. It should, as long as the system is working. And 
did you have uh, a system or any equipment that could have assisted you in learning the make and the model and year of the vehicle? Okay. I can already, and I'm not that smart, and I'm not a police officer, but I'm going to say no. Officer Redbeard did not have any sort of equipment that's going to bring up the license, pl license place a registration because he was standing on the street. So I doubt that he had access to something like that unless there's some tiny portable thing that fits in his pocket. But I'm going to give it a no. Let's see if I'm right. At the time of the incident? No, I was on foot with no other equipment. Ah, well, there you go. Okay, so next. Is fair to say that you did not know that information until later when you were told by Detective Casey or another detective? No, because like I previously stated, I can recognize vehicles pretty well and I knew what approximate... I knew the it was a Ford Escape and I knew the approximate year of it. You did testify that, and you can also see from the exhibit video, that the front end of the vehicle was damaged. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. You mean damaged from all the people that you ran over? And they bounced off of it? He's so willing to try to prove a point, he's going to ask all these other questions that are so... He imagined being the jury and sitting there. Oh, wow. And you can still make out the make and model and year of the vehicle with extensive damage. That is correct. Could you see the emblem of the vehicle at that point? I don't recall if I saw an emblem or not. I know the body style of the vehicle and I knew it was a Ford Escape. Would it be fair to say that Many SUVs have the same type of body build. I'm sure some vehicles do look similar. So that would it be fair to say that there's a possibility? No. I'm gonna say no. That you could not make out the make and model and year of the vehicle, especially with it being extensively damaged to the front. No, I was confident that it was a four scale. <laughs> Awesomeness. Okay, now what? Did you notice any tents on that vehicle? Oh, God, here we go with the tents. Uh, the front windshield that I looked through, I know it was not tinted or it was not tinted enough to... Um... Sorry. Okay, one thing I do remember about this testimony is that, you know, he, he's always asking about the, teen, the tint. Sorry. Um, Officer Redbeard actually knows a lot about tint. The tint. So he, not only does he educate Darrell on silhouettes, he educates him on tinting the tint on windows. It's pretty good. That made me recognize you. Did you see any tints on the side of the vehicle? Not that I recall. And if they were, they weren't that dark. You don't recall, though, for sure, if there were any tints to any windows of the vehicle you saw. Well, all windows are tinted to some extent. It just depends on to what uh, percentage of tint that they come with. So I'm sure there is tint on the on the windows because vehicles come from the factory with some level of window tint. So I guess to your question, was there any window tint? I'm sure there was, but not to a degree that would prevent me from seeing who was driving it. Explain what you mean by uh, tint percentage. <laughs> so there's different varying degrees of tint that you can put on vehicles. Can you elaborate for the jury? Oh, okay. Oh, I'll overrule the objection. Mr. Brooks, please um, ask your question again. Um, you stated that uh, all cars come from the manufacturer with some level of tint, but you made a reference to percentage. Correct. Can you elaborate on uh, percentage, what, what, what would constitute a darker tint versus a lighter tint? 
Well, you've asked two questions now, so which one do you want them to answer first? <laughs> the, the last one, I'm sorry. So you're yeah. asking yeah. Now, yeah. About the 10 percent. About the 10 percent. Mm hmm. Get ready to get educated. So, like, a 50 percent tent would be a lighter tent than like a 35 percent tent. So, the, the, the lower the percentage, the darker the tent. That is correct. Okay. You stated that you're pretty decent with uh, making out, make, making model years of uh, vehicles based on your line of work. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. Would you know of the make and model of the vehicle that you saw that day? Would you know if those model vehicles come from the manufacturer with any team? To be honest with you, I don't work for Ford, so I don't know mm -hmm. if they come um, with tent, but I would assume as most vehicles, um, when they come from the factory, they come with some sort of tent. I believe usually the front is approximately 50% tent and the rears are usually, I think, 25 or 30 or something like that. So from your knowledge, the, the backer windows are you usually from the manufacturer maybe a little bit darker than the front. Correct. Yes, I understand. No further questions. <laughs> Very briefly. Thank you. Uh, so the barricades that we saw... Okay, I have to stop. Look, I got so... Uh, and he's like, okay, there's really nothing I can get him on. He even knows about making models. He knows about the tent percentage. <sighs> I guess I'm done for now. Okay. Let's see what Zach has to say. Uh, at the intersection, intersection where you were posted, was it been blown over by the wind? Uh, yes, yeah, so when I deployed the barricades initially, um, standing upright, they kept on blowing directly, like right off the street. So um, I tipped them down on their sides so they wouldn't, I guess, uh, catch as much wind and they wouldn't blow all over the place. Did those barricades appear to slow down the SUV as it drove through them? Objection. Speculation. <laughs> um, overruled, he may answer, given all of the cross. Yeah. Uh, no, it did not slow the vehicle down at all. You discharged your firearm three times toward the vehicle? That is correct. Did all three rounds strike the vehicle? Yes, they did. Can we please put up for the jury exhibit number three, which has previously been published? Go ahead. We're going to start at the... Two minute and 59 second mark if we can, and while we're working on that, can we please clear the screen now? Thank you. What, what exhibit is that? Three. Three. We're at the 258 second mark uh, on this exhibit number three. Do you see a vehicle on the screen? <coughs> yes, I do. Does that appear to be the same color of vehicle you saw uh, drive through the intersection where you were posted? Yes. Let's play from this second, please. Pause. We paused at 302. Does that appear to be the same make and model as the SUV you saw driving through the yeah. intersection? Objection. Overrule. It's clear. Yes, it does. Shut up, Darrell. Is there a difference between this vehicle and the vehicle you saw at your intersection? Uh, the difference in the vehicle is that there's no damage on this one. Okay. Let's play again from this point. Seven seconds. Did you see a person wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt in that clip? Yes, I did. 
was the appearance of that person and their clothing consistent with the person you saw driving the SUV through your intersection? Objection, speculation, two different incidents. Mm -hmm. Overruled the witness may answer. The same person. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 120, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Okay. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Does that appear to be a vehicle consistent with the one you saw driving through your intersection? Yes. And the person seated in the driver's seat, does that look like the same person you saw driving that red SUV? Yes. Can we put up for everybody, please, exhibit number nine? Go ahead. Everybody. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw driving through the intersection of uh, Wisconsin and Maine? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. Hearsay. Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver of that same vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody at exhibit number 169, which has previously been published. Go ahead. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. See the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw drive through the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine? Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver? Yes. What's going on with that front passenger window? Looks Objection like Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It looks like it's rolled down. So if someone had, before this incident, painted that window black, covered it in a black paper bag, and taped it up with duct tape, and then rolled the window down, would that have prevented you from seeing through the front passenger window? Objection, speculation. No. Overruled, the witness may answer. Who is the person depicted in exhibits number 120, number 9, Let's say it. number 169? Say, say it. Daryl Brooks. Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. The objection is noted for the jury is advised to disregard as it's not testimony. It's a comment. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. He's like, thank you. And I appreciate the patience of everyone as we concluded with that witness. Uh, we will now take our lunch break. It's 12.58. Um, I'll give the jurors... Um, I'll have the parties come back at uh, 2 o'clock and the jurors probably shortly after that. So thank you everyone. Please rise for the jury. And there you have it. His cross-examination was exceedingly long and exceedingly pointless. But Officer Redbeard owned him over and over again. So it was worth it. All right, until the next time, be kind to one another, be kind to you, and I love you all.